Do you want to grow in your understanding of Jesus? What about being able to understand Paul better, or maybe the Torah, or maybe even the Bible in general? I'm about to introduce you to five books that have had a significant impact in my life and hopefully will impact yours as well. Each episode in this series is created to help people like you who may be trying to find resources that will help you grow in your understanding of Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah of Israel, as well as maybe a Jewish understanding of the Torah and the Apostolic Scriptures. I want to help guide you in your journey by exposing you to some of the resources that were valuable for me on my own journey. Stick around and I'll share these five resources with you along with links to where you can pick up copies for yourself. Before we get started, I wanted to say that up to this point, I've tried to stay with more entry-level books that would help people who are just starting out on this journey. In this third episode of this series, I'm going to dig a little deeper. For some, the books I present in this video may be still considered entry level, but they may be a deep dive for others, challenging your spiritual paradigm. I would love to hear what you think about this selection. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, I'll put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video by saying that although I still consider all of these great books, I don't necessarily subscribe to all of the positions put forth by each of the authors. If you want to know why I still consider these great books, you can go back and check out the very first episode in the series right here. With that in mind, let's jump into the list. Number one, Meet the Rabbis, Rabbinic Thought and the Teachings of Jesus by Brad Young. I know I've already recommended two of Dr. Young's books, and I'll continue to recommend more. He has some really great resources available that you need to know about. I also wanted to begin this video with this particular book because it sets the groundwork for many of the other books I'll be introducing to you over the course of this series. Meet the Rabbis will not only introduce you to Jewish sources, it will challenge your way of reading the New Testament. Rather than reading the apostolic scriptures in a vacuum as most people do, especially those who have unhitched themselves from the Old Testament, Dr. Young shows us that the teachings of Yeshua and the apostles are part of an ancient religious tradition of transmitting Torah interpretation from one generation to the next. Yes, Yeshua and his disciples had a specific mission, but it was within the context of Judaism. When we read the apostolic scriptures outside of the broader conversation of Judaism, we can come up with some really creative conclusions that are often the exact opposite of the biblical intent. Dr. Young has written Meet the Rabbis as an introduction to the Jewish conversation that has taken place over the last two millennia so that we can have a frame of reference for the teachings of Yeshua and his disciples. He starts with a general introduction to rabbinic thought and then moves into explaining the relationship between a rabbi and his disciple. From there, he has a few chapters that work to dispel traditional misunderstandings about Jews, Judaism, and the Torah. This includes a chapter to explain that the Torah is more than simply a legal code of law as most people understand it to be. He transitions to a section explaining the various Sanhedrins that existed during the days of the temple and why Yeshua's trial wasn't an official trial held by the great Sanhedrin as many are taught. He then concludes this section by showing several parallels between rabbinic literature and passages from the apostolic scriptures. After this, he gets into the main content and introduces the reader to various Jewish texts along with various rabbinic figures and their primary teachings. He supplements all of this with various additions such as illustrations, maps, a glossary of terms, a various index of authors, subjects, and sources, etc. To wrap it up, Meet the Rabbis is an excellent place to start for anyone wanting to begin understanding the relationship between Jewish literature and the teachings of Yeshua. Number two, Jesus the Pharisee, a new look at the Jewishness of Jesus by Harvey Falk. If you just fainted at the title of this book, you're probably not alone. For many people, just hearing the words Jesus the Pharisee is scandalous. Isn't that an oxymoron? Weren't the Pharisees the enemies of Yeshua? Well, if you read my first book recommendation, Meet the Rabbis, you'll quickly find out that Yeshua didn't consider the Pharisees his enemies. As a matter of fact, the reason there was so much tension between Yeshua and some of the Pharisees of his day was because there was such a close affinity between them. Someone once said that Yeshua's criticism of the Pharisees was less like a fight against his enemies and more like Billy Graham chastising the Southern Baptist Convention. Well, Rabbi Harvey Falk created quite the stir with his 1985 release of Jesus the Pharisee, 
Even now, almost 40 years later, the title is as shocking as it was when it was released. I'm recommending this book for several reasons. First, it's a great exposure to a completely different perspective on Yeshua than you've probably ever heard. Falk presents a portrait of Yeshua as a Torah faithful Pharisee from the school of Hillel who preached against the errant teachings and misdeeds of the opposing Pharisaic school of Shammai. Falk's intimate knowledge of rabbinic texts, combined with his knowledge of the Gospels, allows him to paint a vivid picture of Yeshua as a Pharisee among his peers. And while I agree with his conclusion, he also draws other conclusions that I completely disagree with, such as his conclusion that both Yeshua and Paul were determined to create a separate religion for Gentiles, based largely on his interpretation of some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So why do I recommend this book? Because it's a great place to find a ton of great information about Yeshua, first century Judaism, and many valuable connections between them. It's definitely worth your time if you can handle reading things from a different point of view or a, a perspective that you're not used to. If you can pick out the, the nuggets and throw the bones back, you'll be doing good. So I highly recommend Jesus the Pharisee by Rabbi Harvey Falk. Number three, The Essential Talmud by Adin Steinsaltz. Rabbi Adin Steinsaltz of Blessed Memory is one of the rare people who was able to accomplish an incredible amount of things during his limited time on this earth. By the time of his passing at the age of 83, he had written over 60 books and hundreds of articles. But his greatest achievement was an English translation of the Babylonian Talmud, approximately two and a half million words in the original Hebrew, with commentary, an incredible undertaking worthy of a life's legacy in and of itself. His book, The Essential Talmud, is the perfect place to start for anyone wanting to understand exactly what the Talmud is and is not. He begins by asking the simple question, what is the Talmud? He explains the development and history of the Talmud, from the transmission of the Oral Law to the compilation of the Mishnah, and then along with the Gemara, or commentary, how it developed into the Talmud. He tells the fascinating account of how the Talmud came to be mass printed and then banned and burned in many countries and then eventually censured by the Catholic Church and that its unique print layout was actually the brainchild of a Christian printer in Venice. After introducing the reader to the history of the Talmud, he explores several different themes that are prevalent in the Talmud. He devotes a chapter each to topics such as prayers and benedictions, the Sabbath, festivals, marriage and divorce, the status of women, civil law, criminal law, sacrifices, dietary laws, ritual purity and impurity, ethics and halakha, which is legal decisions, and Jewish mysticism, etc. There are several powerful statements he makes, but one of the statements that has continually stood out to me was this. He says, The Talmud is perhaps the only sacred book in all of world culture that permits and even encourages the student to question it. Think about the ramifications of that for a moment. The Talmud is not a book of dogma and legal codes, but one focused on creating students with a lifelong passion for learning. If you've ever wondered about the Talmud and didn't know where to start to try and understand what it was and what it was about, the essential Talmud is definitely the place to start. Before we move to number four, I wanted to ask a favor. If you've purchased any of my books, I would sincerely appreciate it if you could go to Amazon and leave a one or two sentence honest review to let both Amazon and other people know what you thought about it. It really helps it to get noticed if it has a lot of actual written reviews rather than just a star rating. Second, if you're considering purchasing one of the books I recommend in my videos, please consider using the link in the description box below. By simply clicking the link when you go to purchase the book, you'll be helping support the channel without any additional cost to you. It's something simple that really makes a difference. Thanks in advance for your help. And now back to our book list. And number four, In His Own Words by Grant Luton. My wife and I have been students of Grant Luton in some way or another for nearly 20 years. He was the leader of a Messianic congregation in Ohio for many years. He's a gifted teacher and a gentle soul. Although he has an unbelievable amount of audio teachings, to my knowledge, he's only ever written this one book. In His Own Words was one of the first books I bought that dealt with Hebrew. It's an exploration of the Hebrew letters and all of the fascinating lessons we can learn from them. No matter where you are on your journey, this book has something for you. After a brief introduction, each chapter is focused on a single Hebrew letter. It digs into the various facets of the letter shape, 
its numerical value, and unique appearances of it in the scriptures. He does a lot with word pictures, gematria, which is the study of the numerical values of the Hebrew letters and words, and interactions of the Hebrew letters with one another. The way he connects each letter to multiple teachings and insights is wonderful and brings a depth to the Hebrew of the scriptures that many people are looking for. It changed my life, and I'm sure it will change yours as well. And if you want to find out what Grant has been doing lately, you can check out his new YouTube channel right here. And number five, To Pray as a Jew by Haim Halevi Donan. Published in 1980, Donan's To Pray as a Jew is a classic. It could just as easily be entitled Everything You've Ever Wanted to Know About Jewish Prayer But Were Afraid to Ask. While Donan's target audience is Jewish, he's also aware of the need to address a non-Jewish audience as well under specific circumstances, such as his chapter on being comfortable entering a synagogue. In his preface, he says he wrote the book with the following intent. What I've done is to present a mixture of halakha and history, midrash and philosophy, in an attempt to explain the contents of the siddur and the structure of the service in such a way as to help make the siddur come alive, to make it more exciting and more meaningful. To pray as a Jew takes a very methodical and fairly thorough approach to laying out information about Jewish prayer, specifically details related to the synagogue service. He begins with the history of synagogue prayer and the proper mindset for prayer. He quickly moves to synagogue etiquette and then focuses on specific sections of prayer within the Siddur. Rather than hitting them in order of their appearance, he gives priority to the prayers that are central to the prayer service and then works his way outward. Throughout his explanation, he offers great wisdom. One piece of advice that particularly stands out for me is this. The Shulchan Aruch stresses that the Pesuke de Zimra, which is the verses of praise towards the beginning of the prayer service, must not be said hurriedly, but slowly and deliberately. To rush through these psalms, as is often done by those who pray regularly, is to distort the very purpose. One who is so pressed for time that he finds it necessary to rush through the Pesuke de Zimra should weigh the following advice from the Talmud. A man's words before the Holy One, blessed be he, should always be few. It is better to say less and to say it wholeheartedly. Again, even if you're not Jewish, to pray as a Jew is a wealth of knowledge about the Siddur and synagogue service that is valuable for anyone who would like to participate in a synagogue service in a meaningful way. There you have it. These are five more books that have had a significant impact on my life. If you'd like to grab your own copy of any of these, please be sure to use one of the links in the description box below because it'll help fund this channel with the creation of more videos like this one. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider giving this video a thumbs up if you found value in it. It really does a lot to help others to be able to find it. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Shavuot Tov from Amet HaTorah. We'll see you next time with another Messianic insight into the eternal Torah of God.